I want to make another recipe that I found in a restaurant trade journal. Trade journals are magazines that go out to businesses. You don't see them on the grocery store magazine rack. This was a, a recipe for calzones or calzone. I'm making the dough the evening before because an Italian friend, she said if you can make the dough the evening before and let it rise in the refrigerator overnight. I have here 10.2 ounces or 289 grams of all-purpose flour. That's my 64%. Figuring the averaging method that in most recipes, if they don't give the weight of the flour, you can figure that each cup of flour is five ounces. This is about just over two cups of flour. And this is 5.8 ounces of water, 100. 64 grams. I'm doing this by weight again. It's almost three quarters of a cup and that's my 36 percent. So I'm going to put that in my bowl. I'm going to add one teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of yeast, and then I'm going to put about half of this flour in there to get started. You don't have to be too fussy. Mix that together and that'll be my sponge. Now I'm going to leave that for a few minutes just to activate that yeast a little bit. I didn't warm up my water because I'm going to put this dough in the refrigerator anyway, so I don't care how warm things are. You can use cold water. It doesn't really matter. It just takes it a little bit longer for the yeast to get active. I'm ready to continue going now here. I'm going to add more of my flour. I'm not going to add it all because I want to just make sure that my ratio is going to be correct. And then I'm adding one half teaspoon of salt. And at one point here, I'm going to get to a dough that's too dry to mix up in the bowl. And then I'll transfer this to the counter and knead it and work in more of the flour as I need to. And I think I'm ready to transfer that to the counter. I can see that it's a little bit damp on the spoon. I am going to add the remainder of my flour here. And then work this in. And what I want is a smooth dough that's a little bit more dense, a little stiffer than a bread dough. And calzone, if I understood what I read, is the Italian pronunciation, whereas here in the USA we would say calzones. I'm going to knead this now for about five minutes to get this smooth. And what kneading also does is there's two proteins in the flour, and those will link up and form the gluten chains that will give the dough its elasticity. All right, so there's my dough. I've been kneading that now for five minutes. It's beautifully smooth. It's got a nice texture to it. It's elastic. Now, to prepare this for rising, I have a large bowl here into which I'm going to put a little bit of extra virgin. No, this is not extra virgin. This is regular cooking olive oil, just pure olive oil. Put that in the bottom of the bowl, slide that around to get it all lubricated, make sure my bowl is lubricated, and then I can cover this with plastic and put this in the refrigerator. Okay, it is now the following morning. There is my dough. I took this out of the refrigerator about a half an hour ago to let it warm up a little bit to come up to room temperature. Before I went to bed last night, I did more prep work. I shredded my cheese and so forth. The one thing I was concerned about was the ricotta because my Italian friend said that moisture is the nemesis of calzone. If water gets into the bottom of the calzone while it's cooking, you end up with soggy dough on the bottom. So what I did last night was I put down several layers of paper towels, spread the ricotta cheese, on top of the paper towels, put more paper towels on top, put that on a plate, wrapped it in plastic, and put it in the refrigerator overnight with my dough. 
So let's start assembling calzone, but first I need to tell you I'm heating up my oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit with a pizza stone in it. That's about 200 degrees Celsius. I'm heating a skillet here and I'm going to put in a tablespoon or two of pure olive oil, what I call cooking olive oil. And then I have two Italian sausages here with the casing, the skin, removed. The weight on those is, each of these is about four ounces, which is 114 grams. So there's my Italian sausage meat. I broke that up really nicely. It's uh, just starting to brown a little bit. Before I finish up my Italian sausage here, I want to add one clove of garlic that I just crushed through a garlic press and I'm going to cook this for about a minute longer. I'm going to chop up some pepperoni. I have here about two ounces or 57 grams of pepperoni slices and I'm going to chop these up so that I don't have to put whole slices in my calzone. I think that'll do. So there's my chopped pepperoni. I'm ready now to start mixing my filling. So here is my cooked Italian sausage meat. This is my chopped pepperoni. And now what I have here is about half a pound, 227 grams of mozzarella cheese that I shredded. This is the ricotta that I told you about that I drained. This, before I drained, it was eight ounces, 227 grams. And then I have here about a quarter cup, which is one ounce, 28 grams of shredded Parmesan cheese. And this is where I really changed the recipe a lot. This is about a half a teaspoon of dried oregano flakes. The original called for two tablespoons. So I'm gonna just mix this up now. And I should have a fairly dry filling here. Okay, so there's my filling that's got a nice feel to it. It's really dry. That's not going to yield any liquid that's going to affect my calzone. I'm going to divide this roughly equally into four pieces. Here now is my bread dough again. This is still a little bit cold, but it's come up quite a bit in temperature. And what I want to do is I want to divide this into four pieces. See that stringiness? That's the elasticity. It gives the dough its texture. This feels really good in my hands. I think this is a nice dough. All right, I'm gonna put three of these pieces away while I work with one. And then working on a piece of parchment paper because it'll be easier to spin it around while I'm shaping it. Okay, that feels pretty good. And I'm going to take a piece of my filling here. This is a lot of filling. And then seal it well around the edges. You can go around the edge and crimp it with a fork. And there is one of my calzone ready to go into the oven. And if you want to, you can use a fluted cutter to go around the edge. And that'll give you a slightly different edge to it. It'll be a little more finished. I have two that look like this and two that are untrimmed. So there are my calzone. I'm ready to start baking those. Okay, to transfer my calzone to my pizza stone, I have a pizza peel and I put some cornmeal in a, like a cheese shaker bottle. And I'm going to put, I think, two in the oven at a time, and hopefully I can squeeze all of these onto my pizza stone. I did want to mention before you put them in the oven, cut a few vent holes, two or three in the top, to vent any steam that might be in there. 
You want to bake them until they're a nice golden brown on the outside and you want to heat the stuffing all the way through. The, the recipe says 10 to 15 minutes. I can imagine going as long as 25 minutes if necessary to get everything the way I want it. I'm taking my calzone out of the oven. Some of these broke open a little bit. These baked for almost 20 minutes. The next thing I want to do is let these cool down because I don't want to eat these hot. That cheese inside is all melted and hot. I want to let these cool down because I want to eat them warm. To plate this, they're cool enough now. I think I can eat these. Just place a calzone on a plate. And this is my heated marinara sauce. Put a little bit of that in a dipping bowl. And that is ready to eat. Can't wait to see how this is going to taste. This looks so big. I'm thinking maybe I should be eating it with a knife and fork. But here goes. I'm going to try this anyways. Get some sauce on there. Mmm. Tender. Yeah, that's good. My Italian friend said that the shell shouldn't be crisp like a French bread, but should be tender. Excuse me. I've got cornmeal on my lips. I'm going to go enjoy my calzone.